streamed down his face. And when you ask him point blank, was it human? And as one of the officers very <laughs> smugly said to us, they sure weren't from Texas. So it was the bodies that, again, placed this on a level that by today's standards, we have a growing list of more and more deathbed testimonies. People that in their final days are describing the little men, the little people, but they weren't human. Deathbed testimonies, I'll give you a quick example of one of the MPs who was out at the crash site and he was posted behind one of the ambulance trucks. And he was told to keep his eyes forward. Well, as any one of us probably would do the first chance he had, you know, he pulled up the tarp in back of the truck and oh my God, it's true. All the talk about the little men. And again, the description, it's nobody that we like to encounter as far as in a dark alley late at night. And still, even up until his death, he kept quiet about it. And then in the last couple days, we have his wife telling us, now just again imagine any one of us married, and especially any of the men. And at the time of our passing, his wife is there with him, and he assures her, he goes, sweetheart, I want you to know, I've always been true. I've always been faithful to you. And then he goes on to describe what happened at Roswell, and how he saw the bodies, and they weren't human. It wasn't a weather balloon as they tell you it was. So in other words, he equated her knowing that he had been a faithful husband for a lifetime with the same importance of what happened in that high desert of New Mexico in 1947. Now the rancher who was originally involved when he was grabbed by the military and he was detained by the military for five full days, he was kept up all hours, he wasn't allowed to sleep or eat, they asked him the same questions all over again. And then he was taken to the local media where he was to essentially confess that he had made up the whole thing, that he was mistaken, that it was just the weather balloon. And after the weather balloon explanation, we now have that it was a top secret project that the Air Force came out with in September of 1994. And the most recent one, the most ridiculous one being that the little people, all the witnesses describe, were anthropomorphic wooden crash dummies. Something that was not even being tested in 1947. It wouldn't even be tested until five years later. So then the Pentagon came up with the explanation of time compression. That all of us, all of the older gentlemen, all the older people here, that as you age, you not only start to forget the days, the weeks, the years, you start to even forget what decades certain things happen. Nonsense. There is no such condition. The Air Force just made it up, once again, to stall time. But getting back to the rancher, after he was on the radio station KGFL, speaking with the same reporter that he had originally told about the bodies not being human, and he said it was just a weather balloon. I'm sorry that everybody blew this, you know, so out of proportion. And as he was leaving the studio, the reporter asked him, what about the little green men? And the reporter noticed that there were two MPs, two soldiers waiting for him outside the door. And the rancher turned back and he said, but they weren't green. So, I thank you. So. Now I want to welcome Ademar Guevaguer, uh, the most important journalist in Brazil related to this phenomenon. He also covered a crash in Brazil, the Virginia case, and he's responsible to make 
the military opened their files in Brazil. Brazil is one of the countries that has recognized lately the existence of this phenomenon. Ademar. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. It is a great honor to take part of this event here in Chicago, to be joined by so notorious UFO researchers from several parts of the world who are here with me to bring you more information about us being visited by other species from outside this planet. But before I enter in that, I want to compliment with all my energy these people backstage who have put this together, and especially the Minister Lois Farrakhan, who was brave enough to bring up this subject in your convention. Thank you. The world needs to hear the truth about us being visited. And this is a very important piece or a step in this process. We're doing history here when people such as you, important segment in the United States, decide to discuss this subject seriously. Well, my friends, I come from Brazil, which is one of a very few countries so far that is committed to the truth about the flying saucer, which has recognized officially the existence of them and that we are being visited by other species. I'll give you some details of how it happened. First, of course, telling you that the day one from when our country decided to have this public knowledge about UFOs was August 9 last year, when the Brazilian Air Force Command, through the Brigadier Junichi Saito, the commander, issued a regulation that says that as of that date, all reports of UFO sightings, and there are many, sent to the Brazilian Air Force base and filed at the Brazilian Air Force Defense Command in Brasilia, the federal capital, should be sent to the National Archives where they can be known to any person. That make the things official. That was an historical day for us because here is an admission that there are sightings of a phenomena which is material and has been observed and registered not only by civilian, but also, and most importantly, by military personnel. Now, until we got to that moment when we got our top-ranking military authorities in Brazil recognizing the UFO phenomena, we have to, put up, to, to build up a strategy of asking our government to open its files. It happened in 2004 when my colleagues and I decided to launch the Brazilian Committee of UFO Researchers with members from several organizations and also independent ones, all of them seriously committed to get the truth about the subject. And we launched immediately a campaign, popular campaign, called UFOs, Freedom of Information Now. It had, so far, two phases. And the phase one was to present our authorities with the real facts about UFOs and build up a petition to present them, which we had with 70,000 signatures from the people, all of them supporting this initiative. 
That was phase one. And then on 207, when we weren't much heard in our intentions, we had to go a little bolder. So we launched phase two. That was Brazilian UFO dossier using the law, the federal law, 11,111, to make the government open their files. And it actually started to happen as we went bold. Right now, as we still haven't saw all the documents that we are seeking to see, we're prepared to release, as of March or April, the phase three of our process. And this campaign still had a long road to go. But let me tell you that since we have launched phase two, when we went bolder, we were able to sensibilize our authorities. And they eventually came clear about the UFO phenomena and released so far 4,000 pages of secret documents that were previously classified. They came by decades. First, they got the documents from the 50s, then the 60s, then the 70s, and they got every time better and better. Then we got the 80s, then we got the 90s. And last year, we got the documents for the years 2000 to 2009. And so far, from four to 5,000 pages are already released at the National Archives where anybody can see and check how our government secretly for all those decades have dealt with the UFO phenomena. Now, of course, this was possible only because there is an environment in my country, in not only in Brazil, but also in other countries of South America as well, that is um, open to uh, this subject. So, as of mid, uh, 1954, in November, one of the first initiatives in the country already told to the nations, UFOs are serious business, and the military should investigate them. That first initiative, back in the 50s, is one of the field that there was on that decade in the entire world, open, public. At that occasion, this gathering got was held at the Superior War Academy in Rio de Janeiro and was put together by military who made a statement, a very serious statement to the nation, and it is. See, folks, it was in 1954 again. They said, the UFO phenomenon is of real concern and has to be taken seriously. Brazilian military should start investigating the subject immediately. And it happened in the 50s. And also, again, in the 60s, by 60, 1969, March of that year, we had a creation in the 4th Aerial Commander Headquarters in Sao Paulo, that building that you see, the first organism, the first unity to investigate UFOs, which was called the Unidentified Aerial Object Investigation System. Now, back in 1969, if I remember, in the United States, we had Project Blue Book, whose purpose was to cover up the whole story of UFOs. Wasn't that so? In Brazil, we had, at that same moment, an organization to seriously investigate this phenomena and go public about them. Plus, this organization was composed by military and civilian and were spread all over the country. Well structured, very detailed, thorough investigations conducted. Let's see a few of the results. These are actual pages of the documents that were released during the disclosure process in Brazil. Here you can see just a few pages, actual pages of hundreds that were released that contained detailed information of UFO sightings investigated by our military in late 60s and early 70s. And you can see by the papers that even UFO landed with occupants were investigated by the military. It means that 
our military, as well as militaries from all over the world, some in silence, some not, know the existence of this phenomenon and how actual, how serious it is. Look a few more pages, and it has all been declassified, hundreds of them that are at National Archives in Brazil. Now, this military also conducted investigation in which they could make beautiful, colorful drawings of the sightings that were made. These were not photos. These are detailed drawings made in the 60s of UFO sightings in my country. Look at that. These are not drawings of UFOs made by regular civilian UFO researchers such as us, but by military investigators that realized in 1969 in previous years and later on that the UFO subject is a very serious matter. You can see even cases of UFO landed, spacecraft that came from other planets with other species, people that are mostly like us inside these vehicles, visiting us for some purpose in being observed by us. Now, this material has also been declassified. Well, to get this campaign going, we had to come up with a very good strategy, the one that I described in the beginning. And it was to select our best cases and confront the government, cases in which we know for sure that military personnel were involved. Because we knew there was no point in coming to then say to our government, you have to release all your files. It would never happen, so let's be smart. Let's ask three cases in which we can prove there was military invest into, uh, participation involvement, and they cannot deny it because we already had leaked documents to confirm that. And these true, these true cases were Operation Saucer in the Amazon, September 1977. What we call the official UFO night in Brazil back in 1986 and the Virginia case in 1996. Let's go very fast through each one of those cases. Now, Operation Saucer is certainly the biggest, the major non-military operation in the world officially dedicated to investigate UFOs. It happened from September to December 1977. It was put out by the Brazilian Air Force in the jungles of the Amazon, in a specific area close to the Belém, city of Belém in the state of Pará, especially in the island of Colares. The Operation Saucer had the purpose to investigate thousands of reports of sightings of UFOs over there. And about 2,000 pages of witnesses' reports were produced by the military that camped in that area of the jungle for four entire months. And more than that, the second objective of the Operation Saucer was to document this phenomena as thoroughly as possible with photos and films in over 500 pictures of UFOs were taken, including at uh, short hinge. And about 16 hours of footage of UFO, including of big motherships with the small objects revolving around, were filmed by our military in an official mission. And the third, contact, the third purpose of Operation Saucer was, if possible and safe, to engage in a contact with the intelligence beyond the phenomena, because there was already the knowledge that there was an intelligence beyond the phenomena, the sightings of these objects in the Amazon. And it actually happened. The three objectives were fulfilled. And actually, it happened when this gentleman, which was the commander of the Operation Saucer, my late friend, Colonel William G. Holanda, had an actual close encounter with a human-like EBE. Now, EBE stands for Extraterrestrial Biological Entity. Us from there up. Us from other planets. Because they are just like us. They have two legs, two arms, a body, a neck, a head, two eyes, one nose, one mouth. 
They are just like us. As I was telling this morning to the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan, when we see the literature, the cases from all over the world where that describe situations in which humans have been in contact with aliens, how are these aliens? Just like us. Doesn't matter if they are short, if they are tall, if they are fat, if they are skinny, if they are brown, if they are pale, if they are gray. Doesn't matter. It looks like the Creator has thrown seeds over many planets, many planets in the universe, and life grown in these planets, as well as here. We yet don't know that we are part of something much bigger than us, but will to very soon. It's knocking at our door, and we have to open it for the reality that's coming. Now, take a look at the field, a field results of the Operation Saucer. Thousands of pages of documentation were produced, of which, unfortunately, only less than 400 were declassified by the Brazilian government. And this is why we are going to phase three. See a few pages of it. Incredible, very detailed stuff. Maps made of the sightings. How did they happen? Where did they happen? When did they happen? What? Where the UFOs? Where the men? Where the people inside of them who saw these objects and the photos? And also, 400 pages of this material and a few hundred photos were declassified. Let's take a look at the photos. Here are just a few of them. About 200. 200 can be seen by anybody that goes to the National Archives, Brazilian or not, in Brazil and in Rio. A few photos of huge objects. These are photos not taken by you, by Roger, by Jaime, by any one of you, by any one of us. But these are photos taken by military during their duty in official mission to determine what is the nature of that phenomena. They were being paid to investigate the action in this planet of people from other planets. Another picture, and then this is disclassified. Now, we know that Operation Saucer, that as I told you previously, started on September 1977 and went up officially up to December 1977, didn't, didn't close, wasn't shut down as we we're led to believe for a few years. It actually continued and was supposedly shut down because, strange 